Hey everybody and welcome to Truck King. Hey, today we're down in Tampa, Florida looking at this, the brand new Winnebago ERV2. That's right, this is an all electric RV. We're gonna crawl all through it, take it for a drive, so stick with us. So this ERV2 is a Class B van. They've been around for a long time, and they've also utilized this platform before, which of course is the Ford Transit van. But of course that was the gasser. Now, Ford has brought out an all-electric Ford Transit that's being used across the country by delivery companies, and Winnebago said, you know what, we can build a Class B utilizing this chassis. So at this moment, this is a what they call a production intent vehicle, meaning it's ready to go. And we're gonna drive this thing today. However, it is not available to purchase just yet. So in a lot of ways, this thing is still being beta tested. They just wanna see the interest, so they're bringing it out like here at the Tampa RV Super Show so that people can see it and let's see how excited they get. The cool thing about this one is that it is completely electric. So in other words, we've got the propulsion system which actually drives the vehicle, but it also has a set of house batteries that do everything else. There's no more propane in this unit here. Everything is electric, the heating, the cooling, the refrigeration, and to that end, you've also got solar panels, you notice, right up on the roof here. In other words, they're using every trick in the book to get as much power into this unit as possible. So those are trickling all the time. But past that, yeah, this is an EV. You're gonna pull in someplace, the charge port is up here in the nose, and you're going to plug in and this is going to charge your propulsion batteries. However, down on the side, there's a second plug. And as anybody knows who's used one of these and you go to a campground, luckily campgrounds generally already have power, you plug this in and this is powering your house batteries. So at this point, let's go look inside. So here on the inside, this is a fairly typical Class B, but I do certainly want to point out one of the things that Winnebago is doing a lot of these days is this very simplistic, clean line design. This is somewhere across between Japanese and Scandinavian. You can't call it Ikea because that name's been taken. However, past that, everything else in here is pretty much what you'd expect. Wet bath. The, uh... It is a cassette toilet, okay. but it's also removable. The cassette toilet, if you really want to take a, a luxurious shower in a B van, you can take this out, set it on the floor, huh. and we've got a, a, a wood filler for the floor, so you got a flat floor, so you could have a, you know, a complete shower mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, orchestrating around the toilet. Around the toilet, right. yeah. Cool. One of the things that I noticed was that we have a portable office set up right here. So you can spin that driver's seat around and you've got a workstation here with all the connectivity and the electrics that you need. And then when you come to the back, of course, this is also a seating area for transportation. But when you put the table in here, this also gives you a workstation for, say, two people while they're on the road. Past that, this will fold forward. You have either as a single bed or you can use it as a double bed. Clean, simple straightforward design. That's about what you get in a Class B anyway. Everything in here is of course high tech, meaning that the controls in this unit are all off one screen and everything connects to your phone via Bluetooth. So you can run this and better than that, you can also get alerts if you're nowhere near the van that your cheese is about to expire in the fridge. So let's go outside and have a look around. So I should mention here right now, because you've seen this very cool wrap that Winnebago has on the van. This is not something that's going to be available for production. In actual fact, this is kind of their nod towards what Detroit does when they're bringing out new models and they camouflage them if they're driving around. But actually, I, I think it's kind of neat. It has representations of people camping right across the country, east coast to west coast. I think maybe they should offer it. So we'll just have a look inside here. You've got the two large doors at the rear of 
this transit. Now when these open up and then you open up that side door as well, you can bring these screens into place. So really it, it opens it up and it gets very airy. You can leave these things open if the weather permits uh, while you're actually on site. Uh, past that we've got all your water controls right here and your main on and off switch. Nice little space here for cargo. And I did ask that grill will come out so you can get your kayak right up through the middle of here or either that leave it back in there either for your dog or, or the kids. So class B, but the big deal here is the electric. And you know, there's gonna be people that are gonna watch this and go, oh, this is a stupid idea. But I'll tell you something, everything starts somewhere and this is the start. All right, we're moving in a certain direction. And the fact of the matter is, is this is not on paper. It's not a concept. This thing is here. They built it, it works, it runs. And on that note, let's go drive it. All righty folks, now here we are behind the wheel. I've got my friend John here from Winnebago and dad's all the way back there in the back, probably having a nap. Hello, <laughs> not napping. So of course the big deal about this is that it's all electric. It's based on the Ford E Transit platform. And this is a first for the RV industry. Now, of course, I think it's gonna move this way more in the future, but Winnebago is really trying to get out there ahead of it and uh, refine this product. And that's exactly why this one exists here today. It's all about driving it, getting used to it, and then refining it for public consumption. So initial impressions from behind the driver's seat are pretty typical of any EV. It's very quiet in here. You hear more rattles out of the back but that's only because the powertrain's not up front drowning them out um, and then besides that smooth linear ev power um, i think this is a line we've said a lot with electric vehicles lately but a vehicle this big and heavy has no business being as quick as it is and i'm coming up to a little straightaway here put my foot into it and it just goes it's beautiful power and i'll tell you where you're gonna love that is in the mountains you're up going up and down big hills the power here is gonna feel excellent now it's gonna suck down your range yes that's absolutely true but when it just comes to the driving experience and the power yeah you're gonna love that going up the steep grades if you're charging the propulsion battery you can use the pro power to uh, charge the uh, house battery as well oh, okay. so but it, it's not as efficient because you invert it and then we gotta put it back to dc okay. but it is possible there's two charge ports on this uh, uh, design so you can charge the uh, house battery independent or simultaneously Let's say you're at a campground, you can be charging the propulsion battery Got it. and the house battery uh, simultaneously if you want. So, John, I just got to ask, because my, my mind says to me that this whole unit's a battery. Why do I need house batteries? Well, uh, right now, Ford is protecting their propulsion battery. Um, yeah, we mm. could use the Pro Power, but it's not efficient it's not the wattage we want when we want it so we really needed to enhance the experience and add the right kind of house system mm -hmm. um, and we've got a proprietary uh, battery system that we've worked with lithionics so it's it's a low and flat keeps the uh, center of gravity low it's back there under the floor where you're sitting mm -hmm. um, but it was necessary for the the camping experience to add our house system uh, because we're preserving the propulsion system uh, for your range. Right. The house system is a 48 volt system, so then our air conditioner is a 48 volt air conditioner. Gotcha. So that's way you're you know at the max efficiency um, in terms of cooling down the unit. Okay, so then so a lot of those systems are separated. So basically, the Ford propulsion unit is just to move the van. Correct. And then your system on top of that is for well systems. For the house. And the house. Yeah. Got it. Okay. What kind of, and you can help here too, Dad, what kind of power is available now in RV parks? A, and then B, do you see RV parks pivoting quickly to try to provide more power to people who need it when they roll in with something like this? Um, it's going to be know, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, certainly if they've got a uh, 50 amp service, that's uh, level two charging, right? Yeah. yeah so um, you're going to get the same charging times as if you went to the public infrastructure that's not a DC fast charger, sure. if it's level two, yeah. that's the same. Yeah, um, Yeah, exactly what you have at home. Right, so, you know, if the campground 
has 50 amp, great. You can put the converter and use 30 amp, or if you're stuck with uh, just 15 amp, you can charge the house system with that. If you think you're going to charge the propulsion battery on 15 amps, it's going to take you a, a while. Long time. Yes, sir. Uh, the solar panels, uh, they're just like a constant trickle. Yeah, but that's uh, feeding into the house system. That's that won't the feed system. the propulsion system. Propulsion. Uh, you know, using solar panels to uh, do a uh, propulsion system would, uh, we're talking weeks, you know. So sure, of course. Right, it's right, just sure. not the level of wattage you need. But w would you say, like, if Ford is to open up their battery pack, kind of for Winnebago to use it, that would be something you guys would probably take advantage of? All of us, uh, every time we talk to a chassis uh, provider, we ask that question. Yeah. You know, you're duplicating... Exactly. you know some systems and wiring and everything this is the 4d transit right now the propulsion battery is the propulsion battery we added the house system got it, got it. that's how we're going to play now so the two things that you're going to want to know is price and i can't help you with that because there is no pricing yet nor will there be until they get closer to a real production unit now this particular unit at the moment, as far as range is concerned, is 108 miles. Now, Winnebago has told us that they're not particularly happy with that, and they're in discussions with Ford. They need Ford to up their game. However, at the moment, being that the transit customer is a commercial customer, that seems to work for Ford. So we need them to to give us a long range battery and at that point Winnebago will be ready to go because of course they've already built this thing. Now last thing I want to tell you is they're taking this seriously. They're looking at other things. Steve and I were down in Ingersoll, Ontario a month ago and saw the new GM Bright Drop delivery van. Now there's a unit that has like 300 kilometers of range which is like 180 miles and I asked the representative from Winnebago and he smiled at me and he says, we're looking at everything. And that just shows you that there's certainly a lot of possibilities coming down the line. So that's it for this one, folks. So, but before you go, please go below, hit like, hit subscribe, and become a member of our channel. Hit that join button and then come right back soon because we got more EVs and more trucks to talk about.